Hey y'all, I got me some organic chips. They're by Garden of Eaton. Haha, <laughs> get it. And they're mini yellow rounds, bite-sized corn tortilla chips. Yum. Made with yellow organic corn. I'm drinking some aloe-born mango juice. Today we are going to film a how we got into UC Berkeley video. We originally wanted this video to be with our brother too. But, but he's at a review session right now for Chem 1A and doing yes. that good studying. But we wanted to get started before the sunset. Just compiled a bunch of questions that you guys have asked in the past and questions that I thought would be helpful for you guys applying to college. So let's get started. Okay, first question is how old are you and what year are you? Oh, me first. Okay, I am 19 and I am a second year. So, sophomore, but actually with my AP credits, I'm a junior. I am 20 years old. I'll be 21 in like two months. And I am a third year. What is your major slash minor and what did you originally apply as? Okay, I originally applied with the major that I'm in right now. So like I never changed my major, which is molecular environmental biology and the College of Natural Resources. Thinking about minoring in molecular toxicology, I applied as an architecture major, spent a year taking classes related to that major, realized it wasn't for me, and then my sophomore year, I applied to be a sustainable environmental design major and I got in, and now I am working on minoring in city and regional planning. What AP and honors classes did you take in high school? Well, we both took AP Euro our sophomore year, junior year, mm -hmm. AP English yeah. language, AP Chem. I didn't take AP US History though. She oh, did. I took AP US History and that was it for junior year and then senior year, AP Government, AP Biology, AP English Lit. Oh, AP, AP Statistics. Statistics. Yes. Yeah. What was your strongest subject and what was your weakest? All of them. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> if you were to ask anybody else, they would probably tell you that like my strongest subject was chemistry and then my weakest, math. Mine would probably be the opposite. I'm, I'm really good essay writer, I guess. Maybe the English Yeah, classes. English, dude. She should be an English major, honestly. That's what all my professors tell me. My weakest definitely chemist well like i was good at chemistry i got a's both years i think if i don't like the subject i won't do as well as i could i agree so. i hate math so what sports did you participate in in high school cross country and track and yes. field i was in cross country all four years track wait were you team captain three years. for cross country too? no i wasn't but i was in varsity all four years it looks good if y'all are captains varsity. and like if you were in the sport and i got medals we both a consecutive medals. amount of years. It was really fun. I loved participating in sports. It kept me physically <laughs> healthy, That's in shape. Struggle. Now I'm like not motivated to run or do any sort of physical activity, which is really bad. Okay, what extracurricular activities slash clubs were you a part of, and did you have any leadership roles in any of them? Yeah. We basically did all of the same stuff. Yeah. Just gonna say so, that now. ASB all four years. I was ASB president. I was secretary. I think I was secretary and treasurer. Then I was mural manager for like all four years. When I say mural manager, like we had to like paint huge murals for all of our rallies and so like I would make sure everybody got theirs done for each class. Yeah, and then we were also in National Honor oh, Society. Oh, I only did that one year Me though. too. We are in CSF though, California Scholarship years. Federation, all four years. So. I was vice president. Yeah, and I was also vice president my senior year. And we um, got scholarships at yeah. there, which was really helpful. So if your school has that and you live in California, you should definitely join it. I was, Chem club. Yeah, I was president of chem club my junior and senior year. We were involved in like everything. Yeah, like there were always club like ASB, there was always like a lot of volunteer yeah. opportunities. Friday night football games, we were always um, on campus until midnight. Yeah. Every day after school. ASB, ASB was basically our life. Yeah. Did you receive any awards or honors? High school. Well, we already mentioned track and cross country awards, 4.0 GPA yeah. scholar athlete award, AP awards, you know mm -hmm. how they send out like AP scholar stuff through yes. valedictorians. Being in CSF four years. Yeah. Like, we got an award and then and like a couple of scholarships at the end, like um, with the county. What was your GPA in high school? Weighted, it was 4.5, but unweighted, yeah, 4.0. 4.0. Did you graduate valedictorian class? Yes. And we both gave speeches. Mm -hmm. And our brother was too. Yeah. We all were. And us, my boyfriend yeah. Devin was also valedictorian. Mm -hmm. What AP test did you take and pass? Well, I took all the AP tests for my AP classes and I passed all of them. Okay, there was like a weird year. My junior year, I did not pass 
any of them, even though yeah, I was shocked. Everybody, too, like, Kelly I honestly think that that was not even English, and like Kelly's so yeah. Good. I honestly think they she, messed up with my score yeah. or like switched it or something because like. It and when you request no a sense. regrade, though, they only go back over the multiple choice yeah. and not like the essays or anything or like the free response, which is yeah. I think. And they don't fair. let you know if you were high. Yeah, up, they don't know like, like the cutoff. twos or the cutoff range yeah. or whatever. So yeah, that was really hard on me. But other than that, I passed like all the rest. What was your SAT score? An ACT score. Mine wasn't okay. that good, honestly. My ACT score was not good. My SAT score, I was pretty satisfied with. Yeah, I only took it twice, got the same score twice. I got an 1890, and that's not even that great. I didn't even bother trying to like study, just went in and took okay, it. Yeah, I tried studying a lot. I like had like the whole handbook thing and I like went through the whole thing. I went through the whole thing the day before, so. Oh, I took it three times. The first time I got one T10, I think. Mm -hmm. The second time I got a lower score and that really upset me. I got like 1980 and so I was like, oh my god, I need to go ham on the next one. So I took it a third time and I got 2180. So that was the score I submitted. Mm -hmm. They the say ACT. that like if you like the SAT, you're probably not gonna like the ACT and if you like the ACT, you're not gonna like the SAT and like I can definitely vouch for that because I was really happy with my SAT score and then like I went to take the ACT and it was like so fast paced and like I didn't like the way yeah, the test was set up. Um, and, and I ended science. up- Yeah, <laughs> and there's science. Uh, and I ended up getting a 29 on that. I'm out pretty of, sure I got it's out of 36? 30. Yeah, it's out of 35 I thought. Oh, 35? It was like 35. We took the SAT before they changed it back to like Yeah, it was out of 2400. So. Berkeley SAT average is really high. It's like 2100. But let me tell you, you don't need, need. to get a We high. have friends who got like, 1500. Yeah, we have friends that like have below average SAT scores compared to like what Berkeley says the average is. Mm -hmm. That's no guarantee of whether yeah, you're going to get in or not. So don't think that just because you got like a bad SAT or ACT score, mm -hmm. you shouldn't bother applying because you definitely should. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Did you have a job in high school? I did. I didn't. I got it after high school. I worked a junior year for my best friend's dad. He owns an insurance company, so I was like an administrative assistant. And I did that for about a whole year. Senior year, I tutored. I tutored for the KC exam. Did you have a busy schedule in high school? If so, how did you manage to balance your schedule? We were so busy in high school. I don't know Honestly, how. Like, we were busier time. then than we, are than we now. were now, but somehow we, this is hard. I don't know how. Like, <laughs> I don't know how hard. to manage myself. Like, yeah. I don't know how I did it in high school. Okay, we had ASB zero period at seven in the morning. We would have to be at school at seven. And Kelly would wake up at like six in the morning, and I would get up at like yeah. six forty. And then we wouldn't go to bed until like one or two because oh, we yeah, had like seriously. six hours of homework every day, all those AP classes and sports practices. So we were exhausted. We had meets. Oh yeah, seriously. Like we literally be at school till six every day. Cross country meets and track meets and like those would take all day we'd have to do homework after school the next day catch mm -hmm. up on assignments we missed because we were at those meets and then you gotta like hang out with friends and stuff i mean like you can do homework with them but you don't want to we always were, do homework. i'm honestly so surprised we were able to manage like social life academics sports and activities still get good grades i don't know how we did it one of the most important things is to surround yourself with people who want to do well yeah, all too. of our friends were like well not and all AP but like most of them like we're really focused on school and we're in the same involved, ap yeah. classes and honors classes as us. I highly recommend naps. I would always take a nap after practice and then just study. Yeah, I like, wasn't a minutes. huge fan of naps. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. once it hit like not even junior year, like halfway through sophomore year, I just started taking naps all the time because I was so tired. Were you a procrastinator in high school? Okay, I was not until senior year. Not even like the beginning. I was like really serious about school and stuff. It was still like the time where you're applying to colleges and after you get accepted into a college, you, just you don't <laughs> care anymore. You're like, okay, I'm going somewhere. I'm done. I'm, I'm good. Set, yeah. Towards the end, I was like, okay, I need to focus again because like I wanted to pass my AP test so that I could take less courses in college. Mm -hmm. I think I'm definitely the one who procrastinated the least out of us three, right? Okay, William definitely the most. Yes. Wait, no, you were, you were more studious than me in high school. Yeah, but in I college like, I think you were more studious than yeah, me. Yeah, there were some times when I did procrastinate in high school, like our chem AP concept mat. I pulled an all-nighter. I remember that. And then I passed hers to like use to help me, so. Yeah, they had all my work. That's the too. best thing about having an older sibling, so. Right. We, I would just pass down all my notes. Yeah. Like, my tests and quizzes and all that stuff. Down what did you write about in your UC prompts? Yeah, well our prompts were, what about Oh yeah, because your... it's different now. It's yeah. like you have eight questions and you choose four. But we had the two prompts and one was 
about like how your surroundings you should have, have like influence. Pull it up. I don't know, but I remember what I wrote about in my so how you have your surroundings about, yeah. like influence what you want to do in the future or something. And then the other was like something you love or some hobby. I don't it, remember the promise, it was like but. something like that. Basically both of them had to like say how something influenced you. First one was about traveling. Our dad lives overseas so we have had multiple opportunities to travel to Asia and I wrote about how that influenced my love for architecture because I was originally applying as an architecture major. And then my second one I talked about makeup <laughs> actually and YouTube and how like I want to influence girls to love themselves, enhance their natural beauty and I talked about how like my mom influenced like me mom with her Asian values of like, yeah. natural beauty that kind of broke me out of my shell and like wanted me to explore. I wanted to choose things that were close to my heart. Like a lot of people wrote about family issues. You want to stand out when it comes to your using like everybody kind of has family issues so unless you have like a very unique family issue or yeah. unless like it really affected you in some significant way okay I don't want to sound insensitive or anything yeah. but like well, most people's parents are divorced yeah, now so like parents are divorced, unless yeah. it was like a very traumatic, traumatic yeah. experience has, then like I wouldn't yeah necessarily write about that because like that was definitely something I thought about writing about for the first prompt I wrote about clashing culture identities so like um, my mom is Taiwanese and my father is American and I talked about how they both try to instill their respective values in me and so like I've been trying to find like a balance between them and then for the second one I talked about my love for reading and how it has led me to try to expand my knowledge how it's made me like more curious and that's why I love like learning that's why I want to pursue an, a college education and why I want to be a science major and all of that just because like I love reading what do you think distinguished you from other applicants I think we both had a really good balance of everything Thing. Like you come here and there are some people who got perfect scores on the SATs but did nothing outside of academics So I think like for us to be able to balance sports extracurriculars we had pretty good UC prompts and high GPA. You just like want to set yourself apart from others. You want to make yourself sound unique. And you know, most people probably aren't going to talk about reading because it's like, what can you say about reading? But I had something to most say about Most people wouldn't like, talk about makeup because it doesn't yeah, seem like- Yeah, I had something to say about like reading. She had something to say about makeup. So we said yeah, it. Um, what other universities did you apply to and what major did you apply as for each? So we only stuck with UCs and Cal I, States. Yeah, in Cal States. I applied to seven schools. I applied to six. UCLA for civil engineering. Mm -hmm. I think I applied everything, everything civil so engineering good. except for Berkeley. So UC Davis civil engineering, UC San Diego civil engineering, Cal Poly, Cal Poly Slow, Berkeley for architecture. All of the schools I applied to, I applied for a science major, either chemistry, biology, and toxicology, like some variation of that. So for UC Davis, I applied with toxicology. I applied to UCLA, either chem or bio, UCSD, chem or bio. I think Davis was the only one I applied for toxicology. Yeah, SDSU and Cal Poly Slow, I think those are both bio. Berkeley, of course, with MEB. UCSB, most of them yeah. were bio. I think we chose a good amount because we chose our REACH school, which was Berkeley, and then safety schools, like mm -hmm. Cal Poly Slow and SDSU you and then mm -hmm. there's some in between. You don't want to go overboard when it comes to applying for college applications because it can get pretty expensive. We know Seriously. some people I know some like people apply to like, like 20, 30, yeah. 30 like that's, that's unless ridiculous. you get like fee waivers for your application like I wouldn't apply to that many. A lot of colleges though like want you to apply and they'll send you like fee waivers. I got a lot of those but I didn't yeah, end up applying to them because I knew I didn't want to go to any private universities or before you apply yeah you should consider how much the application fee costs and whether you really want to go to that school or not like if you were accepted to that school would you choose that school do you really want to go there like don't waste that's why i didn't apply to ucsb or yeah i knew i didn't want to go to like stanford or yeah, not that i would have gotten it and i didn't want to go to like most of the cal state so yeah like i didn't bother applying where were you accepted and where were you denied well you guys know i was denied ucla and that really broke me because that was the second to last school. I was gonna find out if I got into Berkeley the next week. So when I didn't get into UCLA, which is probably because I applied as a civil engineering major, I was so fucking stupid to do that. I thought that there was no help. I thought I wasn't gonna get into Berkeley, but I got into everywhere else. Okay, so I'm like the opposite of Kelly actually. Like I got accepted everywhere, including UCLA, but I was waitlisted at Berkeley. And, and like was literally scary. I was depressed for like a week, hardcore depressed. I thought I wasn't gonna get in off the wait list. Berkeley was my number one even from before. From the beginning. From yeah. the, like I she told, was the one who told I told Kelly like Berkeley, like please go to Berkeley, it's so beautiful. Cause we 
went there on our junior college trip where we go like see a bunch of different colleges and so like Berkeley was one of the colleges I saw and it was like the only college I really liked and I was like oh my god Berkeley 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 so like ever since junior year I like had my sights set on Berkeley mm -hmm. when Kelly applied I was like oh my god if you get in like you have to go to Berkeley yeah and then she got in and she went and then like I went to visit her a few times and I just fell in love with the school even more and so of course I was heartbroken when I was waitlisted and like I didn't understand because like I did everything the same as my and other better. friends and like and it was like hard for me to understand why like, I was waitlisted and like some other people I knew or we, we read like online what we should do if we were ever waitlisted so we wrote like a letter and just asked them to like reconsider application and like why I deserve yeah. to get off the waitlist and attend Berkeley because I, I was here because she was already yeah. here she helped me write the email and then mm -hmm. like I had Kelly like turn it into like, the admissions yeah, yeah. office and there's no guarantee they'll read it or if okay. they'll take it into consideration for your application at all but it just like kind of helped me feel a little bit better yeah. about it still a sore spot for me I don't really like talking about it like, I just like want to give you guys hope if you are waitlisted like you never know you might get in off the waitlist our brother applied to all the same schools and Stanford we got in everywhere but Stanford yeah just so you guys know. how did you react when you got into UC Berkeley I had just gotten out of my AP English lit test and I was with my friend we went into the ASB room and I was like just checking my email after the test because I was like oh yeah like, it was early May early so May. I was like going through my email and then I see an email from Berkeley and I was like oh my god what and then I, I saw like under the header part of the text from the email said congratulations and I was like oh my god and I just all you started, have to like, do is read yeah I just saw like, congratulations and I just started freaking out and like I hugged my friend yeah and then I called Kelly and I just finished my calculus yeah. final I think like, I can't remember if I called mom first or if I called I you know. but I called Kelly I called my mom my friends were hugging me they were really excited for me because yeah. I knew like how bad and it was crazy because like I had just taken my calculus final and we were waiting with like a bunch of our friends and then I just started oh, yelling like yeah, she got she was and so everybody was jumping like, it was really cute. Then I remember when I got in, we were at a track meet. I, I was so meet. scared because Devin is a regent scholar, so he got early acceptance and all that. My other friends had found out whether or not they got in. Some were accepted, some were rejected. Yeah. And then I was just waiting and I was so scared. I was like, I don't want to check it, I don't want to check it because I was so heartbroken over UCLA. Because yeah. UCLA was your number one home. Yeah, it was. But it Berkeley was. was mine. I checked and the only thing I read was congratulations. I remember jumping into Devin's arms. And he doesn't like to admit that he he was crying, but he was. We were both <laughs> crying. Even though we didn't want to choose a school where we could both attend, you know, because we didn't want to base our like future off of being with each other. But we knew that this was like our chance to be together in college. the number one public university. Yeah, so I just started crying. And our other friend Isabella had gotten in, so we hugged and cried all together. I ran to Kaylin after her event, and I was just yeah, like, oh, like yeah. everybody was like screaming. It was just so fun being I had either just in finished that running when she opened it. One of the best memories of my life. Why did you choose UC Berkeley? Because it's the number one public <laughs> university, duh. I love NorCal. I definitely wanted to get away from Oxnard for a while. Like some people wanted to stay close to home, so they chose like university only an hour away. For me, when I went on like my junior college trip, it was the atmosphere of the school. Like it yeah. seemed really lively and it was like so different from the other schools we visited. Like Davis felt really like bland and empty. We went to see UCSC, but it was like in the middle of nowhere and like it's still a beautiful campus yeah, and sweet. I love being in the middle of nature, but I didn't want to be so far from like everything and everyone, even though I'm still far from everyone here. I'm still in the middle of this huge like community and I love it. It's just so diverse here and yeah, the I diversity love the people. I've had such intellectual conversations with everyone. All the classes that I've taken have enlightened me. In There's some so way, many like um, great professors here who have done like so much research. I walk out of class feeling inspired to yeah, like you, change the you world. Learn. There's so many events on campus too. And so, it's like There's a really just so much stuff now. to do. Yeah. And it's a beautiful campus. Like, it is. It's huge. And it's right in the Bay Area which is beautiful right next to san francisco yeah we can go to sf there's like oakland whenever. emeryville last question any advice for incoming freshmen or for high school seniors applying to colleges get someone to read your uc prompts you go over your application get your fafsa in on time oh yes oh bitch. my god fafsa and okay. apply for scholarships so important yeah. don't work on your application like the week of you need to do that shit months in advance like we started our junior year because our ap english yeah. teacher made us mm -hmm. and i'm so grateful for that have a teacher check it have your friends check it your parents have parents check it like your prompts can make or break your application yes. honestly like extracurriculars yes. are important but if you can really like present yourself and like in, who you like, are as a person in a way that attracts the, the attention of diversity. admissions officers yeah, then like diversity. that's the most 
important. Mm -hmm. They don't want the same student coming to their campus, like All the, the time, same yeah. student that they always get. Someone who they think is gonna make an impact, who can change the campus they for want the, the better. Next you know, Noble they want Laureate. the next <laughs> like, Zuckerberg. They want someone who's like determined to do well in school and, and to change the world. For incoming freshmen, okay, this is really hard for us because we both are perfectionists and we were valedictorians in high school, so to come here and not be and to top not get class A's. and to, yeah, to not get A's and to not stand out. Like, like in your literally, classes. it's almost impossible to get a 4.0 here. <laughs> and if you do that, especially with like a science major, yeah. holy, you, you're a genius. Yeah, so you have to learn to like just try your best and accept that you tried your best. <laughs> and if you feel yourself. like you're trying your best and it's still not working, get help. Like seriously, don't be afraid to get help. There's so many tutoring services here. And study with friends if that's what works for you. And if it doesn't, then make sure you're studying on your own independently. Go to office hours, yes. although I'm being a hypocrite because I don't really go. I do. But, but it's really like hard. Good. Okay, I also work and so does Kelly and like literally every time like my work or like a class conflicts with office mm -hmm. hours so get help as soon as you realize you're struggling and take care of yourself Ooh. physically and mentally because there's so many is a very academically but like we have like, like really good mental health like services here and we have a really supportive community there's gonna be a time here where you're you just like doubt be yourself pretty depressed and, and you just need to take a break for a while and just focus tough. on fixing yourself and making you'll yourself get stronger. It is tough, but Berkeley is a great school. Just like make sure you make good friends who are going to be there for you and who yes. will support you yes. and who will understand you because my friends, yeah. they saved my life. And I know it's, it's great so helpful to have your sibling here. Yeah, they love like, me basically. <laughs> everyone's like, wow, you guys are like so close. That's so weird. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's weird that you're not close with your siblings. She's not only my sister, but my best friend. Boss. Yeah. So it helps to have that group of people that you can always depend on. Yeah, for real. And it's important to find them from the very start. Yeah. Freshman year is the time to meet new people. It may find not that be group. with your floor mates, although I just, ugh, my floor was amazing. Yeah, like I'm friends with all of them. Well, not all of them, but like most of them. We still talk, we still go hang out. You may not find that with your floor mates, but like you might find it in your classes. So if you're in your classes, like on the first day, you want to find somebody, mm -hmm. make friends with that person or like those people and like study with them and then they'll soon become yeah. your like best friends. I don't really have my group of people on my floor, but I did find that group of people on Devin's floor and we're still friends to this day and I've become really close with a lot of students in my College of Environmental Design and I'm still friends with them to this day ever since EB1, fall of freshman year. And now we're also friends with like each other's friends. Yeah, let and us know down below if you answer. have any other questions related to UC Berkeley or high school or anything of that sort. We really wish that William could have joined us in this video or even Devin, but they're both really shy on camera so it's okay, maybe next time. And you know, if you attend Berkeley and you need someone to do your makeup, look at this highlight though. Look at it. Look at she can do your makeup. Yes. yes. So fine. Yes. And I talked about how weird it is for like me to be with Kelly and then people will come up to her and be like, oh, like, are you Kelly from JK Beauty Way? And then I'm like, whoa, she is famous. Like, no, I'm not. She is though. Like here she is. Just because like people find her dorm room tour video mm -hmm. and like that's how most people know her and then they'll just keep watching her videos. Oh, like literally freshman year, the first week, there was a girl in my study lounge and she was like, oh, do you have a sister that makes YouTube videos? And I was like, oh my gosh, do you watch her videos? And then she was like, yeah, JK Beauty away. Your sister is Kelly. And then she's like, you're Caitlyn, right? And it's I was funny because like, yes, you're only I'm in a Caitlin. couple of videos and I know, know who I, you are. Like at that point, I was in like two videos. Yeah. And it was just so funny. And then like at my first football game, literally my first football game, like <laughs> these two girls time. come up to her and they're like, are you Kelly from JK Beauty away? Can and I'm like, picture? can we get a picture oh, with you? That was and the then, cutest thing ever. Like, it's it's fun. really fun. I like me. Oh, and then I'll go into Kelly's work when she's not working and her co workers will be like, oh, you're Kelly's sister and stuff because they all watch her videos. <laughs> oh, and work. I have found a lot of great friends at work. You guys should oh, yeah. think about so getting if you, a job because you not only make money, but you make another group of friends. But also, like, if you don't need a job, though, don't yeah, really do it don't because it's the out. struggle. It's I feel like work school. for me is like a break from reality. But it is. I love work. It's so fun. Where I do you work? work? I work at Cafe 3 in Bear Market. You guys see me? Say mm -hmm. hi. Okay, I used to work at GBC, but I stopped this semester and now I only work at Brown's Cafe. Well, anyway, we hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave any comments or questions you have below. And check us out on Twitter and Instagram at JKVD8. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace.